Good morning. Welcome to another Victober video. Um, I have my coffee here with me today. It's in a Doctor Who mug, which is kind of weird for Victober, but um, I'm filming this in the morning before I have to go teach at the university. And I wanted to do another Victober video. I've been watching a bunch of um, Victober related videos on BookTube, and so I thought I would jump in with yet another video. And today I'm going to talk about my favorite Victorian author and his books. Um, my favorite Victorian author is Charles Dickens, if you didn't know that already. And I haven't read all of his works yet, but I am getting there. So I wanted to today talk about and sort of rank, at least tentatively, uh, the books that I have read of his in the order that I like them from best to least. And then also just briefly mention the books that I haven't yet read by Dickens. Um, so that's my plan for this video. I apologize for the weird lighting. The sun is shining in from that window over there and, like, lighting up this side of me, which is really weird. Anyway, um, so we're going to dive on into this. First of all, I'm just going to briefly mention the Dickens novels I haven't read yet, and then I will go into my not-so-definitive ranking of, uh, the books of Dickens that I have read. Alright, so the Dickens books that I haven't yet read include Hard Times, Oliver Twist, Tale of Two Cities, Nicholas Nickleby, The Pickwick Papers, Martin Chuzzlewit, and with a caveat, The Old Curiosity Shop. I started to read The Old Curiosity Shop uh, a couple years ago, and I don't know, I lost interest in it and put it down and never finished it. So I have read some of The Old Curiosity Shop, um, but I have never completed it. I'm hoping maybe I can go back to it at some point and actually finish it, because I would like to say that I have read and finished all of his major novels. Um, so I, those are the ones that I have not yet read. All right, um, I have read seven of his novels thus far, um, and I am working my way through Little Dorrit as we speak, so that book is sort of out in the ether until I finish it. Um, because I am about 200 pages into that one yet, so I don't have a ranking for it, of course. Um, so we're just going to go through these novels um, in, let's see, we're going to do this actually from least favorite to most favorite. Um, even though I stacked them with my favorite on top, but whatever. So, <clears throat> and this will make Katie from Books and Things kind of sad. Um, and I really need to give this book a reread because I feel like on a reread I might have a different opinion about it. But coming in at number seven is Our Mutual Friend by Charles Dickens. Um, and I don't, like, dislike this book by any means. There's just so many of his books that thus far I've liked better. Um, and like I said, this really deserves a reread for me because I feel like there were things in it that I missed. Um, because it took me a long time to read this book. I would read parts of it and then I would sit it down for, you know, months at a time and then go back to it and not um, necessarily remember everything that I had read previously. So I feel like I just need to sit down and reread it in a shorter time span. Um, there were things about this book that I really loved, uh, but again, for some reason it just didn't click with me. Like, I loved the beginning of this book. Very atmospheric. It felt very Dickens, and then I feel like it, it kind of let me down after that. I don't know. I was wanting this to be more atmospheric, like Bleak House, I guess, and it wasn't. Um, basically, our mutual friend uh, centers around inheritance, and uh, the character of John Harmon, who they think has drowned, but um, when his body is pulled from the river and events happen surrounding him and his inheritance, Anyway, like I said, this deserves a reread, but for now it is at number seven on this list um, because, like I said, I feel like maybe I didn't do it justice when I read it because I was um, setting it down for such long periods of time that I don't feel like I necessarily picked up on everything that was going on in this book. All right, so then coming in at number six of my... Dickens that I've read so far, and again, like I said, this is not a definitive ranking by any means, um, is Dombey and Son, and 
I really did enjoy Dombey and Son. I liked um, that this book has some strong female characters in it. And uh, basically this is focusing on the Dombey family, specifically Paul Dombey and then his daughter. Um, he has a son, Paul Dombey does, who is um, very weak and can't do much, but Dombey doesn't seem to care about um, the fact that his son is not, like, hardy. Um, he has a daughter, uh, what is her, what is his daughter's name? Florence. Um, and she is very precocious and he pays no attention to her. He's all about his boy child, right? Um, so, and he doesn't care about his daughter. Um, and Florence, like I said, is very precocious and everything, but he could care less about her. And so it follows the story of these two young children and their father who only cares mostly about money and then his son, um, and yeah, that, that kind of sums up, uh, Dombey and Son without spoiling anything. Um, so this comes in at number six. Then I feel like the next two could be kind of interchangeable, I guess, um, because I wasn't sure where to rank these. Um, so at number four is Barnaby Rudge. Um, I absolutely loved this book when I read it. I feel like this is one of the books of Dickens that doesn't get talked about very often. And that just makes me sad because I feel like this was such a great book. I really, really loved this. Um, it takes place during the Gordon anti-Catholic riots in 1780. And I, of course, didn't really know much about those riots or anything like that. So this book was just really good. And I feel like it's one of those uh, works of Dickens that people don't necessarily, you know, talk about that much or even necessarily read. It, you hear, you know, so much about books like um, Our Christmas Carol and um, David Copperfield and Bleak House and all of those. Um, but you don't hear a lot about this one, which I think is a, a travesty because it is such a good book. And... Um, I feel like more people need to read this book. Um, and, yeah. Anyway, so that is number four. And I realize, <laughs> silly me, um, I left out number five, guys. I left out number five. And that is uh, The Mystery of Edwin Drood. I don't have a physical copy of that book. I actually checked it out from the library. This is the last novel that Dickens was writing. Um, he never finished it uh, because he died before he could finish it. Um, but this is a book that um, is really focused on like the underbelly of London and like the opium um, addiction that was running rampant at the time. And it's very dark and uh, I don't know how to even really describe it beyond that. But Anyway, I wish Dickens could have finished it because I feel like it would probably have been even better than it was if he had been able to finish it. Um, but yeah, that one actually comes in at number five and then Barnaby Rudge comes in at number four. Um, I apologize, not having a copy of The Mystery of Edwin Drew totally threw me off there. Um, so moving on then to number three. And like I said, th four and three in this ranking... Um, could be interchangeable because, like I said, I really, really liked Barnaby Rudge and I really feel like it deserves more uh, more readership, more discussion when people are talking about Dickens. Um, so I'm not sure that ranking it at number four was fair. But at the same time, my number three pick, I really, really love um, as well. And I love all the movie adaptations of it. And that is A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Um, I'm sure everybody knows about this book, you know, Ebenezer Scrooge and Little Tim and, um, yeah, I don't, <laughs> this book just sums up the holidays for me, even though, like, it wasn't one that, you know, was ever focused on necessarily in my family, but now that I'm older, this is sort of the book that sums up Christmas for me, I guess. 
Um, and I, I like to reread it every year and watch one of the movie adaptations every year as well. Um, and I absolutely love this vintage classics edition of it that I have. It's just so cool. And the edges of the paper is black. Um, so I don't know. Like I said, <laughs> um, both of these could be interchangeable for different reasons. Um, but for now, A Christmas Carol is number three. Um, because I, I just, yeah, this book just is, it's, it, it, it says Christmas to me. Uh, um, so yeah, number three is A Christmas Carol. All right, we are down to our final two books now. Um, so let me get, take a drink of coffee here. All right, so number two on this, uh, not so definitive ranking list of Charles Dickens's works that I've read so far is David Copperfield. And, uh, this is of course, um, a book that people say is sort of autobiographical of Dickens's life. Um, not completely, but sort of. Um, and of course it follows David Copperfield through his, his childhood and then into his adulthood. Um, it's a classic tale of growing up, and of course we have the wrathful stepfather, uh, Mr. Murdstone, and then we have um, Steerforth, who is David Copperfield's friend, and a whole cast of just delightful, very Dickensian characters that I absolutely love. It's funny because we were assigned to read David Copperfield for a British novel class that I took when I was an undergrad. And prior to that, I had never read any Dickens, really. I mean, I kind of knew the story of the Epic Christmas Carol, but I never read the book. Um, and so we were supposed to read this for a British novel. This is actually the copy I bought for that class. And um, I think I got halfway through it, maybe, and then never finished it. <laughs> and uh, eventually came back to it years later and finally finished it. Um, and absolutely loved it. I don't know what was wrong with me in that British novel class. I wasn't, I wasn't, um, as up on British literature at that point in time or on like Dickens and the, the Victorian classics as I am now. And so I think that was part of it. Um, I've, I've read so much more since then because we didn't read any like classics of this nature when I was in high school. So I was woefully woefully ill-prepared when I went to college and started majoring in English and we were supposed to read books like this. I had no context for any of it, right? Um, anyway, but David Copperfield is uh, one of my favorite books. I feel like it illustrates Dickens' um, masterful skill when it comes to coming up with just eccentric characters or characters that are almost like parodies of... Um, themselves <laughs> or of people that he uh grew up around or whatever so yeah i really love david copperfield as well so that's number two on my list and then number one my favorite dickens book of all time um this is the one book that will probably never move in this ranking um even after i've read all of dickens novels this one will probably this one will probably never move it it never has um, is Bleak House. Um, I have read Bleak House multiple times, which surprises a lot of people because some people will think that, why would, why would you read Dickens so many times? But I just love this novel so much. Um, and of course, if you are familiar with Bleak House, it is the story of a, sorry, my feet are bothering me. There we go. It is the story of a, uh, court case, John Dice and John Dice, and these orphans, who are caught up in this case, and this the John Dice and John Dice case just keeps going and going and going, and it's eating up all of the money that was part of the um, like inheritance that was uh, part of this case. Um, and then there's also Esther Summerson, who is sort of the caretaker for these two orphans, and they end up at a place called Bleak House. And again, this is another one of those books where I feel like Dickens is at his best in creating just masterful characters and also the environment in this book is just 
amazing. Um, especially, like, right from the beginning, you get um, a wonderful picture of Victorian um, London, right? Um, so it says, London, Michaelmas term lately over, and the Lord Chancellor sitting in Lincoln's Inn Hall. Implacable in November weather, as much mud in the streets as if the waters had but newly retired from the face of the earth. And it would not be wonderful to meet a megalosaurus, 40 feet long or so, waddling in like an elephantine lizard up Holborn Hill, smoke lowering down from chimney pots, making a soft black drizzle with flakes of soot in it, as big as full-grown snowflakes. Gone into mourning, one might imagine, for the death of the sun. Dogs, undistinguishable in mire. Horses, scarcely better, splashed to their very blinkers. Foot passengers jostling one another's umbrellas in a general infection of ill temper and losing their foothold at street corners where tens of thousands of other foot passengers have been slipping and sliding since the day broke, if the day ever broke, adding new deposits to the crust upon crust of mud, sticking at the, those points tenaciously to the pavement and accumulating at compound interest. Fog everywhere. Fog up the river where it flows among green eights and meadows. Fog down the river where it rolls defiled among the tiers of shopping and the waterside pollutions of great and of a great and dirty city, fog on the Essex marshes, fog on the Kentish heights, fog creeping into the cabooses of Collier Briggs, fog lying out on the yards and hovering in the rigging of great ships, fog drooping on the gunwales of barges and small boats. And so it talks about the muddy, foggy, grimy atmosphere of London at this time and just sucks you right into that gross, um, you know dark, unhygienic atmosphere of London, and I love it. Um, so this is definitely my favorite Dickens book. Every time I pick it up, I always want to reread it, even though um, I really just don't have time for that right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is my, my ultimate favorite. I don't think this one will ever change. The others might, but this one at number one probably never will. Um, and who knows? Once I have read uh, my last, what is it, seven or so books of Dickens that I haven't yet read, um, this ranking system might change, except for this one. But um, those are my seven uh, Dickens novels that I have read so far, and how I feel about them from least favorite to most favorite. Um, if you've read any of Dickens' works, tell me what your favorite is, or... Um, your least favorite and why. Um, if you haven't read any Dickens, tell me which book you would like to read of his, if any of them, and I will talk to you again soon. Thanks, guys.